Right. So, uh, good evening, everybody. Uh, this is Guru Tom Pena for FMA Discussion, episode 420. And tonight, we've got Matt Stapes. Uh, we're going to interview Matt about his journey to martial arts and also his involvement with the Festival of Martial Arts 2023, which is going to happen in two weeks' time. So, I'm very pretty much looking forward to this uh, because this is going to be a huge uh, gathering. Okay. Um, on that weekend it's not just going to be about martial arts uh, uh seminars and everything but there's going to be a lot of um activities for the whole family so without further ado let me bring up matt hi matt how are you doing hi tom great thank you very much thanks for inviting me on how are you i know uh thank you for coming uh i'm good and we our 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 schedule just don't match at all. <laughs> no, uh, there's well, there's a lot going on at the moment, isn't there? Yeah, so. <laughs> I, know, I know. But yeah, I'm 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 very glad that you basically you agreed to coming in, it's even at this uh, at this point of the day. I know you had a long day, so oh, and this is pleasure. a bit like uh, too late for you. Um, but yeah, um, so guys, if you're watching this podcast, um, please make sure that you say hi. Tell us where you are watching from, and if you have like any 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 uh, question for Matt, please don't hesitate to put it in the comment box, and we're going to try our best to uh, address your question. Okay, right. So let's get on with it. So Matt, uh, how did you start your martial arts journey? Um. Well, I, I, I won't go into too much detail because it's been done to death. But long story short, <laughs> um, I didn't I, I didn't have the, the the best start. And there was a lot of issues and problems and um, there was quite a bit of violence and stuff. So essentially, it wasn't a great way to grow up as a kid. It's all water under the bridge now. But that led me to want to try and figure out, you know, best way out of that. How could I sort of how could I resolve that? And so. Um, I, I, I looked at a few options. I was a big fan of Spider-Man at the time, but mm -hmm. the chances of getting bit by a radioactive spider were pretty <laughs> zero, crazy. you know. Um, <laughs> again, Tarzan, big fan, but, you know, there wasn't any gangs of marauding apes that were going to adopt me. So, um, all I was and your, really your hair is not long enough. <laughs> no, that's not, yeah, so all I was left with was... Um, you know, was the martial arts of the day. There was Bruce Lee, there was Kung mm -hmm. Fu on the television, Monkey. I was really a big fan of that as a kid. Um, those kind of shows. And so watching those and I saw martial arts and I thought now, you know, this is a superpower that is achievable. This is something that you could mm -hmm. do. And so that was the first sort of spark, if you like. And it, um, you know, you know, when you see people and they're really, really super passionate about football and they yeah. just, they talk about it, they live it. And that's all they ever do. Yeah. You know? I'm like that with martial arts. I never felt that way about football, but the moment that I saw martial arts, it just, there was just something within me that resonated with it. And um, yeah, it's been a passion ever since. Okay. So what style or martial art did you start with? I, I started off, I had a few false starts. Um, mm -hmm. So I had a go at judo in the beginning because, again, this is going back a long time when yeah. there weren't martial arts clubs on every corner. A black belt in any in any system was a rarity. Yeah. And so, you know, it was a hard job just finding anything. So the first yeah. thing I tried was judo when I was a kid. Didn't really stick at that very long. It wasn't um, it wasn't really for me. There was no kicking. There was no punching mm -hmm. and all the things that I saw on the television none of that. And there was a particular drama with the instructor at the time who basically gave me a telling off. I'd brought this secondhand outfit, this gi, and it had an orange belt. And, and, and as a kid, oh, I had I no see. idea okay. how to do the jacket up. Of course. of course. So I put the belt on without realizing it, went to the class, and the instructor called me out of the class and basically gave me a telling off for wearing the wrong mm. belt and said I was disrespecting the art and stuff. Yeah, and of course, yeah, yeah. I'm just a little kid. I didn't know any yeah. better. So that freaked mm. me out. And um, so I left that alone. I mean, I went back to it in later years with a much happier story. But that's how I started. Then I did some amateur boxing. And again, okay. there was no kicking. Um, you know, I, there was a lot of hard training. There was a lot of um, road running, a lot of discipline. So a lot of great things within that. But I didn't get to kick anyone. So that was that was not great either, you know. <laughs> Um, and then eventually I found karate. I, I, again, I bypassed through the ninja years of the 80s when yeah, 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 everybody yeah. was into ninjas and, um, <laughs> you know, and your film yep. wasn't any good yep. if you didn't have a ninja in it. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah. And then, and then I was very lucky to find karate and that was, that became my home for a lot of years. And so that was my sort of foundation art, if you like. Um, yeah. And that's something that I'm very grateful for to this day because, 
you know it, we all need strong foundations we all need yes good we do and and i think that's something where um today's way of looking at things maybe is a bit lacking you know we we, we don't train the way that we used to do back then yes yeah very true very so true. yeah so that was my start all right okay which uh, particular style of karate if you don't mind me asking yeah so that was what a room what are you yeah 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 so that's that, a nice um, solid that's a nice solid style yeah it, again it's it's one of those where there's like with everything there's a lot of strong points to it mm. and there's a lot of things that maybe not so much you know nothing has all the answers and so yeah um, i mean what it what it what it did give me was you know discipline work ethic um, yeah. peers a good peer group you know positive actions so lots of really great life skills that yeah that came from that so it doesn't matter what discipline in that regard yeah. you're learning all of those really good skills exactly good and then from what are you did you venture into other arts after yeah yeah so like a lot of people tried to different things um started getting into full contact kickboxing some thai did some olympic wrestling um did a bit of catching things and then moved into crab maga combatives i'd started working the doors by that stage and mm -hmm. so my 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 view on what i wanted and needed was different so yeah. I, I was moving away from that sort of competition side of things and far more into the um uh, i hate to use the term reality but that more yeah. usable way of doing things yeah. and so um and, and so yeah i started training with all different guys from different things some judo guys mma guys you know strikers all different things then i started getting into crab and kapap when that first started coming over to the uk mm -hmm. um and, and and sort of did that really really heavily for quite a while i was very much into that and a lot of stuff with um dave turton as well I used to travel up regularly to go and train the, the, so that's the traditional sort of jujitsu route mm -hmm. and all that kind of thing um and so a really good mix of stuff but the focus was always on what was going to work for me in those environments yeah. of course of course you have to you you have to adopt and you have to basically like think on what is more functional for you what is what mm. is something that you you're gonna it uh, will be useful for you every time you you go yeah every time you do a job i mean jujitsu is pretty is quite strong or has a strong has a big stronghold here in the uk isn't it oh yeah absolutely yeah yeah again there's obviously bjj has now come to the fore in the past mm. 20 years and it's growing massively but there's still a real a real solid traditional jujitsu um sort of group of people and and there's, it's still a strong art in itself and there's a lot yeah. to be said for it you know it's um they they both they're both different flavors different branches yeah. of the same tree you know mm, and that's mm, and mm. that's fundamental i think to a lot of what we do we're all as they say standing on the shoulders of giants you know we we may think we've reinvented the wheel but we really haven't yeah yeah mm. we're just basically expressing what others have done before and mm. just doing it in our own way yeah, yeah. absolutely mm. yeah all right so when you were basically like when you, when you were uh, from karate to to, to kickboxing to jujitsu, what were the things that you managed to, or attributes that you managed to bring across all the other all those training? So what were the common mm -hmm. common common attributes that you basically uh, used or brought in in those trainings? Well, I think that actually goes back to what we said originally about having really good foundations, and mm -hmm. I think you know it once you've once you've involved yourself in an art to a level where you understand you know quite a lot of it yeah. i think then you see the similarities across the board so you can yeah. go somewhere else and see the mechanics and the body movements and and what works and what doesn't and you also know yourself a lot better as mm. well i mean you know i'm 6 2 i'm 18 plus stone i'm a big guy and if you can imagine me lined up with a row of japanese people i was always the one getting shouted at you know lower lower and getting whacked and um it didn't matter how low i got i was still not low enough you know um and, and I, I do so know a few guys like you were quite tall and big and they tried to basically like get them lowered for like when they train like with silat or japanese martial art and they won't be able to do it <laughs> mm, yeah so again it's one of those so, so what what you tend to well what i tend to find is that for me that it was finding i really enjoy seeing the similarities of things yeah, because you I can know. take different arts from completely different locations around the world yeah. historically That's and true. they've reached similar conclusions and so if these people over here and then yeah. these people over here and they've and they've all reached the same conclusions that's got to lead you to believe that you know there's some there's there's some you know it's credible there's some mm. reality to it you know? that's good yeah that's true that's true okay before we carry on let's just say hi to those who are uh, 
watching the podcast. So we got Terry Hoven from Stockton, Stockton, California. You got Robert Small, Small from Missouri. You got Richard Pacman from Kansas. You got Wayne Hunt, of course, from the UK, saying hi, uh, hi Tom and Matt. Um, Grandmaster Ron Saturno uh, from Stockton as well, saying hi, how are you? Um, Wayne has a question, but we, I'm, I'm, I'm going to bring it up in a bit. Okay. Uh, Parker Moiko says, hey guys, Kurt uh, says, uh, obligatory rubber chicken salute from Homer, Alaska. <laughs> 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 it, uh, well, hello I mean, everyone thank you for watching. Catholic, quite a good it's, it's a good guy so yeah. an, a, a veteran and he, he he also cross trains quite a lot and you're gonna see him like hitting the sometimes hitting the bag with a rubber chicken so. okay right. <laughs> unusual <laughs> but, uh, yeah. hello everyone Thanks okay yeah. <laughs> so all right i'm okay um Wayne's the question is this: What is your views on Filipino dumog? I just don't know if you know what Filipino dumog is. <laughs> yeah, you, I might need a little bit more explanation on that. Okay, okay. So, well, Filipino dumog is, uh, in a nutshell, it's like the counterpart of uh, punk Russian. So you've got you've got grappling, you've got almost like wrestling. Uh, you've got some punching into it, but it's pretty much more on the grappling side. Um, I'm not sure if you'll be able to actually answer this, but I mean, I don't know if you've seen any of it. Mm. So but, my yeah. my honest answer is, is my background is more in Japanese kind of arts than coming from that. So I don't really have a great deal of experience within um, within those kind of systems. I, I flirt around the edges and I really love seeing people do it. I mean, it's fantastic. And I, I would have loved to have done more. Um, but yeah, it's not being honest it's not really my area of expertise um you know i've always been very good at thumping people hard yeah. um you know and that's kind of where my specialty lies outside of that i'm a bit of a um yeah i'm a bit a bit fingers and thumbs <laughs> okay well i've got to follow although okay so you you basically have like you you've done cap up you've done uh crab as well mm. and you basically work the doors okay mm. um in, in 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 basically your experience okay what are what are the basic skill sets that you you find uh important okay in 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 those uh, scenarios skill sets so we're not talking about like uh uh situational awareness or uh, basically like skill sets so um, like when i say like striking punching grappling or whatsoever mm -hmm. so um, what do you think are the important ones um, well, it's kind of hard because you're cut you, you, from what you've just said. There, it seems like you're cutting out some of what are the actual important ones. So for me, it was always um, communication was critical. Being able to mm. communicate, problem solving in the moment again, massively yeah. under, under underestimated and underappreciated. So be those two things. Um, understanding body language again, mm. absolutely sort of crucial to to, to the overall. Um, and so once you've mastered all of that and once you've got the sort of hang of all of that which is something that the doors will teach you if you do it for a long time then you you end up not being involved in in lots of physical altercations because you're being able to resolve them yeah. before they come yeah. to that or figure something else out yeah and so when you're looking at that that's sort of critical the ability to um appear confident even when you're not you know the mm -hmm. ability to project that you know and, and and make people not want to get involved with you um yeah. so all of those things were sort of critical if you're talking about physical skills Phys then yeah physical skills um then then for me for the role for the job and it's different to you know getting into a fight yeah um and then what you're looking at for me it was a lot of it was was controls and restraints was actually learning how to um control a person yeah. safely both for them and for me um obviously you can't just go knocking people out left right and center yeah, these days yeah, you'll end up yeah. in jail you know and exactly it's not, not right either yeah exactly um, especially here in the uk <laughs> mm, yeah so you've got to be you know you've got to be very aware of that and not everybody needs that not everybody deserves it you know but in the same vein you do have to have physical capabilities because unfortunately not everyone is a nice person so mm, um true. you know having the ability to control somebody to tie somebody up to lock them up and to if you like um give mm. them pause for thought without doing any long-term damage mm. that's you know that i think that's one of the most critical skills for 
what I was doing anyway. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, it, that's a fair, it's a fair, fair, fair answer, especially when you're working the doors. And mm. I know with the liabilities and everything that you're basically facing, you need to be able to control the situation. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Well, that was there was close protection as well with the uh, the bodyguard stuff and bailiff stuff and that sort of thing. And so, you know, all across all of that, um, working for. You know, when I was training NHS um, security and those kind of things. Now, all of those things, you know, you can't just jump straight in with a high yeah. level of violence. You just can't. So, um, yeah. so there needs, you, you know, you need to have a better answer. Yeah, mm. very true. Thank you. Um, so Wayne said, Matt, I agree. I'm six four. When I went to train in Cavite and Marikina, I had to adopt it to my size. Mm. Yes. So Wayne was saying he went to Manila basically to, to train with some of the masters there. Man, if I'm if I'm going to if I'm going to stand beside you and Wayne, we're gonna look like Lord of the Rings. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna be the hobbit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, here, here's here's the thing. I mean, what I um all joking aside, I mean what I what I found out is that. Um, uh, there's no question that, you know, size matters. It has a bearing and everything yeah, else. Yeah. And, you know, daddy, daddy, <laughs> right. But uh, I went to Thailand, right. And I was training in Thailand and everybody around me was, was, was like sort of this big, mm. right. Tough as nails. I mean, my instructor over there had had like 300 and something odd professional fights. I mean, it's just bonkers. And so, you know, so, so maybe small in stature but absolutely huge mm. in uh you know in courage and strength and fighting spirit and all the rest of it so i would never uh i'd never, never mess with me on that anymore <laughs> you know <laughs> okay so uh what are you what what is keeping you busy at the moment are you still like in the martial arts industry or in the self-defense industry yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, I've stepped away from security now. I haven't worked frontline for a few years and I stopped tr I stopped teaching that side of things uh, just as we went into lockdown. And, and so I let that slide. It wasn't um, wasn't really doing it for me anymore. I had other things okay. going on. So uh, but I've still got my full time gym. I still teach a lot. Uh, again, I don't do as many seminars now as I was doing, but I'm, I'm still active. I got the festival, as you know, which is uh, coming up very shortly. So that's taken all of the time. Um, I've got my social media businesses and I'm also studying for a Ph.D. So I'm kind of busy all the time, which is great. I like being busy, but the, the martial arts, I, I don't think I'll ever really sort of leave that completely yeah um it, yeah. it's 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 a big part of my life and a big part of who i am and and even if you know even if i as i age i can't train as much as i used to i can still help other people and you know improve other people and and, and hopefully pass on some of the some of the knowledge that's been passed to me yeah what what course are you doing for your phd if you don't mind me asking um yeah so i'm actually looking at um, expert positioning and authority status through the use of social media. So, okay. it's, yeah, well, it's a mad world that we live in at the moment. And, mm. um, you know, the whole of society is changing and shifting. Social media has got a lot to do with that. And and we've all, you know, we all see videos of people on YouTube and Facebook and stuff mm. now. And, and we all see um, some of the trolling that goes on. We see some of the friction that goes on. And, you know, yeah. and you can have, uh, and I've seen this, you know, you can have, top level ex ufc fighters that have been training their entire lives you know top mm -hmm. level people whatever mm -hmm. and they do a little video and then somebody who's been training for like five minutes is like that's rubbish your stance is all wrong you got no balance you know you that'll never work in the street you know all that kind of stuff right <laughs> um but strangely enough that doesn't just apply to the martial arts world that is right no. across the board and so across it's the board yeah 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 so it's something that i find fascinating you know human human behavior always uh, yeah. it interests me so i thought i thought yeah I'll, I'll have a look at that so i did my master's in it and and so it's just sort of expanding that out really it's a fascinating subject and the world is changing and it's changing at quite a pace social media's got a lot to do with that so it's mm. interesting to see that's how true. all this plays out that's mm. true actually I, I i see some of your uh reels in instagram and even like mm. cross posted in facebook it's really nice because um, you, the, the way you present yourself shows how how long have, have you been like in martial arts, the journey that you've been through and the kind of instructor you are. It's uh, very constructive. Um, it doesn't project any kind of like ego or something. 
but it it really gives us quite a lot of like tips and something to think about to anybody who's viewing it so uh yeah it's uh, i i would recommend guys you look at checking uh matt's uh, instagram uh account and looking at his video yeah he posts quite a lot from from uh, tips for technical skills uh physical skills and also talks about like self-defense quite a lot so thank you for that mm -hmm. i enjoy i enjoy watching that no thank you thank you for mentioning it it's um yeah that is again it's fun to do and it's something that i've done for years and i started off on tiktok years ago um and i know lots of people sort of frown on tiktok and things and for whatever reason but it's a uh, it's a, it's a necessary skill set these days you know and, and again if we move into a more sort of business orientated conversation for a second you know if you if you run a club if you run a martial arts um organization you know uh, we're not talking about making money just for the sake of making money, but you've got to pay the rent. You've got to pay yeah, the yeah, fees, yeah. you know, for, for you to exist as a club, there, there are costs yeah, involved. Of course. And, and so when you look at, you know, engaging new students, keeping the club ethos going, you know, promoting what you do, um, short form video is a great way to go about it these days. And it's, you know, it's the most shared form of mm. content on social media. It's the most watched and consumed form. Yeah. So it sort of makes sense to get involved with that. I just happen to have been, at the forefront of that a few years ago um and then that and then i sort of help other businesses to sort of understand that and use that so it's a great it's a great journey it's a great road just because we get older doesn't mean we can't still learn stuff that's what i think of course of course of course okay um kurt has a question do you think uh the social media and the availability of immediate information is a good thing for martial arts and culture mm. um so I, a little plug here. I'm not doing it purposely. It's just because it's part of answering the question. Fine. Plug away. I, I, I wrote, um, I, I wrote a, a number of books, but a, a book that I wrote just before lockdown, myself and Kai Morgan, we wrote it together, and it was called Online Martial Arts, Evolution or Extinction. And it talks exactly about this subject. And so we basically talk about all different elements of it and whether it's good or bad or indifferent. And we don't reach any conclusions. It's just a conversation. Mm. But it's, it's really interesting because we released that literally three weeks before the, the lockdown here in the UK. Oh, wow. And the whole world shut up and everyone went online and yeah. we all changed everything that we did. And so a lot of those things actually came out to play. Now, um, the reality of it is, is that um, it's a bit like everything else. So I can I can get on video. I could show you twenty different things, right? Mm -hmm. And I there you go, right? Firstly, that person trying to implement them, a quite often they're not actually going to follow through and learn it to any level. So there's no real danger there. Secondly, and as you guys will know, anybody that's done martial arts for any length of time, you need to be you know, an element of what you do needs to be in a room with people that know what they're doing so they can adjust mm. you, they can help you, they can point you in the right direction, they can show you where you're going wrong. Because the thing is, one of the main things with watching videos is that whatever it is that you're not doing quite right, that gets amplified. And if you practice it not quite right a hundred times, all of a sudden it's a lot not right. Um, yeah. and, there's, and there's no there's no steering along that way. So I think, yeah, there is a danger that you know that the, the wrong sorts of people can access the information however i think that's mediated by the fact that most of these people would never put the work in to learn it properly and you and i both know that there's no magic to this you have to put the work in you, you know you have to do the the hours on the mat without that of course mm. of course yeah i mean during the lockdown yeah a lot of a lot of instructors try to uh create content or basically create a video of mm. what they do um, to be able to help sometimes not even just to uh, to earn money but also to help themselves what they're mm. going through because yeah, everybody course, yeah. is going through quite a lot of psychological mm. um, challenges during the lockdown mm. so yeah no it's time for everybody and you know if you if your entire life had been teaching and, and running a business and teaching a club mm. so i mean i i teach basically six days a week, every week, right? Mm -hmm. um, I love what I do. I enjoy doing it. All of a sudden, shut the doors, no teaching. Yeah. Uh, well, what, what, what am I going to do? You know, what, what am I supposed to do with myself? And I was one of a lot of people at that point. You know, I'm lucky in that I had 
online courses available already. I'd started all of that and I had all of that infrastructure in place. So I wasn't having to suddenly start making content and, mm -hmm. and, and online courses and things. I already had a lot of that. Um, but, but yeah, as you say, I mean, for a lot of people who are instructors who teach to suddenly not have that, um, but then the flip side of that, the really good thing about that is now that we've come out, I do believe that now we're on the other side of it for the moment. There's a there's a genuine um, research of of people appreciating martial arts and getting together and yeah, training together. And, you know, you know, you don't you don't realize what you've got till it's gone, isn't it? That's what people say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I think there's a there's a, there's a big case of that. And so we're at the other end now. And you know, there's a lot of a lot of really good things happening and a lot of good people getting back out in the world and sharing knowledge and stuff. And there's a really good buzz at the moment, I think, around the UK martial arts scene. Yeah, and I do hope like people who are creating like content and or creating videos are basically becoming also like or embracing that certain degree of like professionalism when they do it as well. Because mm. before it was like, oh, I'm not accountable to it whatever i want what whatever i want to uh to put out there i'm just gonna put it out so yeah but what's the what's the answer you know because the thing is you can say there's um <clears throat> you can say there's lots of people out there that are that are videoing rubbish and putting rubbish out there right we've all got opinions there are people who yeah. think what i do is rubbish and so on and so forth right but then what's the alternative because if you think back to the old days with that closed door club Mm -hmm. You know, there was all kinds of nonsense going on behind those closed yeah, doors, and course, yeah. and people were telling their students they couldn't train anywhere else, and they couldn't, so they couldn't explore and see whether it was rubbish. Yeah. So that cult-like behavior led to all kinds of strange and daft goings on, <laughs> that, um, and still does to this day. So yeah, as much as yeah, I do you know, think, so as much yeah. as we see stuff on YouTube and Facebook and what have you, and we think that's bonkers. I bet you there's just as much going on behind closed doors in clubs yeah, all around. Course, yeah, of course. Yeah, I've been yeah. I've been through a few as well. So mm. that's yeah. So yeah, I do agree. Um okay. Uh the, 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 the. Kurt has a comment. The rise and acceptance of YouTube foo and the power of video documentation. Mm. Okay. Uh and Wayne said you need hands on. Yeah. Uh, Brett, so many precious nuances are not comprehended with interaction with someone that grasps them as is willing to enlighten you. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So I think basically everyone's saying the same thing or similar things, which is, you know, you can get so much from a video in the same way that we used to read books and you know how many of us over the years brought martial arts illustrated and and stared at the photos you know of, of the new technique of the I month did. trying to fix <laughs> you did yeah you know how many of us used to put the old vhs videos and rewind the fight mm. scene trying to figure out how to do it right guilty <laughs> exactly we all we all did it and we used whatever medium was available of the day mm. now we're in a world where we can stream live we've got shorts we've got this we've got the other and so you know the the, the technology has moved on but other mm. than that it's exactly the same we're we're doing the same thing just with different kit that's yeah, 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 you know? yeah so so when you get the the sort of older generation pointing the finger and it's like oh that's terrible <laughs> and then i say to them you know i bet somewhere in the back of your house you've got a box full of old vhs <laughs> <laughs> you know martial arts how-to tapes yeah mm. uh, and they're like yeah I'm, well there you go yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean when i was when i was uh uh exploring as well i did buy quite a lot of uh vhs tapes mm. i i mean magazines uh books mm. uh like uh, journals as well so there you go. That's that's the only way for you to be able to enrich yourself and to be able to expand your knowledge. Yeah. Outside, basically, your dojo. Yeah. So. Yeah. I know. It's, but isn't it isn't it fantastic? So I mean, all joking aside, we can say we can say all oh, these all these negative aspects. But mm -hmm. but here's the positive of this, right? When I was a kid, I was if I was lucky, I'd get to see a television program once in a while with a little bit of martial arts in it. Occasionally, mm -hmm. I could hire a film you know, from the local video store and I'd watch an hour and 20 minutes of dreadful acting and plot just for those golden moments of martial <laughs> arts, right? Yeah. That's how it was. Now I'm in a world where I can click a button and for, you know, quite often free, but for very, very little cost, I can get direct tuition 
from mm. top level instructors anywhere in the world. Now that that access yeah, is is just yeah. mind bogglingly amazing. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. So that's very true. I think it's better to to sort of focus on it that way mm. than it is to just look at the negatives of things. You know, we've 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 always got to adjust and we've always got to adapt and we've always got to um, accept that life moves on. And yeah. so it's for us to try and make the best of that we can you know so what i say to people is that if you you know if you think that youtube is just full of terrible instructors teaching terrible things then get yourself on there and do better yeah you know represent good martial arts yeah that's, that's true. what i say so it's one of them where if you do that then you're you know you're far more likely to have um to have a, a positive you know input into the into the space Mm -hmm. and then people can then find you and so you can start changing the the narrative you know instead yeah. of instead of saying it's just full of rubbish people represent the good <laughs> stuff you know keep the good stuff alive we're yeah. we're we're in real need of good martial arts right now there are so many um I'm, I, I don't know where it's happening all over the world i'm sure it must be but you know we're at the moment we're in a world where franchise model is really pushing out lots and lots of people are doing sport kind of kickboxing kind of stuff you know it's a very generic formula yeah but it's very popular and and it's spilling out all over the place and and good strong traditional martial arts of all different styles you know they're they're in danger of of becoming yeah. obsolete and being lost if we don't fight to keep them yeah so you know That's so it's true. not just about representing it's almost an obligation if you will to stay yeah. current yeah. Actually, it's not just in martial arts because I teach dance and I see this problem or this situation in dance as well. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, like yeah. I said, I, th I think it's across the board. Yeah. Mm. And e yeah, all the politics behind it. And even like in fitness, actually, I, I can say mm. because I'm also, I I'm also in that industry. So you can see like um, there's a lot of uh, franchise videos going on or franchise groups going on. And you can see it's like the way... The way they teach it, it's like, mm, doesn't really sit well, but there you go. It's mm. it's basically what, how things are moving at the moment. So like you said, it's really important that we try to put ourselves out there and mm. basically put good contents and positive contents as well mm. uh, yeah, totally. yeah. for everybody. Yeah. Mm. Well, it's, okay. it's, it's just a question of scale, isn't it? So it's mm. it's that's essentially what the franchise models do. They're very, very good at scale and, and they can replicate over and over. And so, you know, for us, the thing is, is to is to look at that and think, well, OK, what can we take from that that's going to help us to represent yeah. into the world? You know, so rather than sort of dismissing it out of hand. Mm. Um, yeah. That's true. That's true. OK. Uh, Robert has a question here. What is your teaching process? A lot of people just teach by example. Really not enough. I've known great martial arts, martial artists that were not great teachers. Mm, again, fair question. Um, well, I'm one of the things that I did that had so much value and I didn't realize at the time. Um, many, many years ago, I went and I did a teaching qualification. And mm -hmm. so I, like a lot of other instructors, I learned by parrot fashion. So my instructor did it this way. I copied it. I didn't really know why I was doing it that way. And that's mm -hmm. what I did. Right. And if I came across people that didn't quite understand the way that I was doing it, then I'd just do it louder or more forceful. But I wouldn't change what I was doing. Right? <laughs> um, and so I went and did this teaching qualification and I learned all about the different learning styles. I learned all about how to frame lessons. I learned all about mm -hmm. the actual skill of teaching. And that was so valuable to me. And it applied across the board. Um, you know, I lecture at university now. I, I, I've been teaching for years in lots of different guises. I run a full time club. I've been I've been an instructor since the early 90s. And I've made more mistakes than I care to think about, you know, and I've got it wrong so many times. Um, now I like to think that I've sort of got a bit of a better handle on it. Uh, I, I don't always get it right. Of course, we don't. But you know, you try. So essentially, one of the things that's fundamental is I mentioned this earlier, you know, I'm a I'm a big guy, I'm a physical guy. And I will do something different mm -hmm. to a, uh, you know, a, a, a chap that's five foot two and 10 stone. Um, I would do it different to a, you know, a, a, a large overweight person, I yeah. would do it different to a child, you know, and so each of those, it needs to be modified and adapted. And that was one of the things that I found difficult at the beginning with traditional arts, because there was a lot of standing in rows, 
doing very similar things and it was mm. you have to be at this angle you have to be precise like yeah. that uh, and for me everybody's different and so you modify the technique to the person that's the that's way true. that i look yeah. at it and so yeah. you know so once we once we figure out how we can get that person to make the technique work for them mm -hmm. then we can then we can then say right fine that's great that's another version of what we do another adaptation of what we do that can then help somebody else going forward and um people who who train at my club they're they're kind of used to my way of doing things i'm not uh, i don't do the whole like very full-on traditional kind of thing nobody um we don't tend to do that because i don't think it's necessary obviously there's discipline obviously yeah, we work yeah. hard um but i but but if somebody's got a question and i, I had a father and son a while ago and um maybe they'll they'll, they'll see this you know um and they string reg me and the son would forever be saying well how do i do it and so we'd have to break it down we'd have to modify it we'd have to look at it and find a way where it was workable for him um mm. that was a great sort of a, a great learning curve because everything that we do everybody's slightly different and it's our job to be able to yes. modify that for them yeah. Yeah, definitely, definitely. I f I fully agree with that one. Yeah, because you won't be able to get people doing exactly the same thing. Everybody is unique. Mm, totally. So, yes. which is really important. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, Kurt said, if Hima can do it, figure things out from books. The rest of the martial arts community can do it too. <laughs> yeah, that's that's a great way of looking at it. Um, so again it's interesting because when you look at books they're they're, they're one dimensional they you know they 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 represent in the way they represent and then you've got to you've got to make some leaps in that you've got to make some assumptions in how that works right mm. and that's what the that's what the really good hema guys are really good at because that's what they do they can they can take Thank the evidence in front of them and then they can figure out the bits and there's a um there, there's a there's a lovely chap called Duncan McAvoy and he's very much into HEMA and things. And he did some lovely videos where um, I did a seminar at this uh, multi thing. And of course, I'm doing my combative stuff and my craft stuff. And I'm, you know, I'm sort of throwing people around and what have you. And he took some of it back with his group and he found and he, and he found the writings in books from like 1600 and something odd showing okay. showing the techniques that I was doing um, from those days. And he was showing how it, how it, how it fitted. And it was fascinating. I'm really pleased that he did that because, like I said, there's nothing new in the world, really. Um, <laughs> and it, but it also validated it because you know, if if people were doing it way back then, yeah. when people used to duel, you know, when there was a problem, there was wars, you know, people yeah. fought hand to hand properly. Yeah. If it was valid then, then it means it's valid now. So yeah, uh, yeah there's 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 a lot to be said from history, and 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 we shouldn't forget it. Absolutely. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. Um, Brett said, if we had this as kids, we would not have learned it as well. Uh, learned as well. Mm. I'm not sure. Yeah, that must be from the discussion earlier on. Yeah. Yeah, no, I think I understand the I understand the point and I and I tend to agree. We live in a now world, don't we, where everything's on tap and um including knowledge. And uh, and I do think that's for the detriment of martial arts because uh again i can only speak from my experience but i'm sure most people are the same and that is that you know there were there were there were times when i wanted to learn more and i wanted to go to the next level and i wanted to see the next thing and i wanted yeah. to be around the corner you know um, but i wasn't ready for that and i wasn't it wasn't my time to to get that information and instructors if they're good they know when that time is and when to hold you back from that yeah and so uh, you know so we we need that i think as students going forward we need to have that the, the correct pace and the the correct drip feed of information and so you know I, I think that yeah if we get everything all on tap immediately and we race through it and we race forward we we may see it but i don't think we understand it and we certainly yeah. don't ingrain it within us yeah yeah mm. i do agree i mean that's mm. why we do have a saying that once the student is ready the instructor appears or something like that so it's almost like yes yes yeah or you basically start understanding stuff when you basically have been doing it for a while and basically understanding the the, the foundation and the structure mm -hmm. properly uh okay phil is in the house good evening matt and tom great Hi. to see you in fma discussion europe and the pacific 
uh, the Festival of Martial Arts will definitely be in the history books. Matt has become the social media ninja of ninja of our time. Too. <laughs> yeah. uh, thank you for that. Yeah. <laughs> Man, Phil, you said ninja. So Matt is very visible. <laughs> Yeah, I'd probably be a rubbish ninja, truth be told. <laughs> a a 6'2 ninja. Mm. <laughs> yeah, not entirely built for that. <laughs> okay, so um I mean it's it's really nice that we you're you're one of those instructors where who have like a so much positive energy and image in creating uh social media content because I uh we need a lot of those um today. So um, let's move on to the festi Festival of Martial Arts. How did you get uh, how did you get into it or how, how what happened how, how did how, how did you tag with uh, Luchi when it comes to the, to the to the Festival of Martial Arts and Kaizen I think. Okay, well the festival basically um, I've done small summer camps for the club over the years where you know, we've hired a field and we've got some instructors in and we'd had a great time and, you know, but it was always quite small and everything. And, and, but I'd always thought about, wouldn't it be great to do it bigger? Now, when I was working security and things, we did a lot of, excuse me, a lot of festivals, a lot of music events and that energy and that vibe and that kind of feeling that comes with that. I thought, wouldn't that be great to marry that to a martial arts event? Right. And then of course, didn't do anything about it. Years went by and stuff. Um, and I went to see, the event site for a small event that I was going to do like a small one day with a few people and things. And I was going to hire a portion of it and I got yeah. there and it was, and it was fantastic. Um, it was a glorious day. I drove down to Somerset and the, the event site itself is up this lane on the top of this hill and it overlooks all these rolling hills. I mean, it's genuinely very, very pretty. And I got there and I looked around and I thought, this is such a fantastic place. This is just amazing. And it was it was crying out for a festival. So I said to the uh, event owners, uh, the, the site owners, I said, well, how much for the whole thing for the whole weekend? Just, you know, ballpark figure. Yeah. So, so they gave me a price. I wobbled a bit and went crikey. Um, and, then I, and then I thought, <laughs> go on, let's do it. You know, I, I, I thought, let's 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 run with it because there's a reason why I'm here today. There's a reason why I'm at this site. There's a reason why I've been brought here. And I, and I don't know whether people believe these things or not, but mm. I'm of the opinion that sometimes things happen exactly. in your life yeah. and you've just got to go with it, you know? So anyway, yeah. that happened. And so I'm like, great, here we are. I've got, I've got, but, but I need some help with this. It's just too big. You know, it's just, it's, there's too much to ask all for one person. Yeah, yeah. And, um, and obviously, Lucci's uh, been doing Kaizen now for a few years, and he's a great guy. And uh, and Kaizen's growing year on year and getting really, really good. Uh, so I basically said, "Hey, let's do let's do this together. Let's get involved. You know, let's make it happen." And um, and and he's come on board with that now. Um, you know, I've I've put an awful lot of time and energy and legwork into into making this you know, a really spectacular event. Mm -hmm. um, and then Lucci's obviously working as well behind the scenes as well, bringing yeah. everything together. So, you know, between us, we, uh, we, 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 we work really well together and um, we've got some great plans going forward, but the festival itself, we've got, um, you know, great, great lineup of instructors, including yourself. Thank you very much. Um, and of course it's without the instructors, without having all the great people, you know, backing us and getting involved, it wouldn't happen and so for all mm. you know for all myself saying oh well, i've organized it i've put all this work in and stuff the point is i could i could do that on my own all day long and it would still be nothing so <laughs> it's you know it's all the instructors coming it's all the support that we're getting it's all the people saying we believe in the event mm. uh, and that's such a fantastic positive humbling thing because um, you know, people could have just turned around and laughed and went, never, <laughs> but, the, but they haven't, which I'm really pleased to say. So, so yeah, I'm super excited. Now we're getting really close. Uh, it's, it's almost time and it's going to be a fantastic weekend. Oh, okay. So briefly describing what's going to happen from Friday to Sunday. Okay, well, it opens on Friday, the 30th. Um, so people can arrive from two o'clock in the afternoon for the people that have got camping. 
So the Friday evening itself, we haven't actually got anything planned. It's going to be a little bit more organic. So people can come and set up if they want to just chat with other people. They can. If they want to do some training, they can. Um, if they want to have a drink or just sit by the fire, they can do all of those things. Um, the day itself starts on the Saturday morning at eight o'clock. We've got uh, Matt's going to do some Tai Chi for us. So that's going to be a fantastic way to start the day. Um, some people are going to prefer a bacon roll and a, and a sit, sit down. And that's fine. <laughs> Others are going to want to do the Tai Chi, which is great. So there's something for each. Um, the day itself starts at 10 for the teaching. There are sessions all day long through till five o'clock. Then we've got lots of demos and things. We've got some fantastic demos going on. We've got um, European self-defense champions. We've got um, nunchucks. We've got uh, full knights in armor, that kind of thing. We've got some really great stuff going on. And then after that, then we've got some bands and things through the evening. So there's a, there's a, there's a great vibe going on. And then on the Sunday, then we, again, we've got another list of fantastic instructors all going through the day. So it's a great, it's a great weekend. And there's, there's something for everybody. Uh, and I mean that in the sense that, you know, if you bring your kids, great. We've got inflatables, we've got play areas, we've got things going on for them. Um, you know, if, 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 if you bring people that aren't necessarily into martial arts, well, that's fine. We've got fitness, we've got yoga, we've mm -hmm. got talks going on, both business and mindset and life stuff. We've got um, various clinics going on as well with things. So when I say there's something for everybody, I genuinely actually mean that, you know? So you've got, uh, Martial arts, mm -hmm. you've got fitness, yep. uh, you've got some mindfulness as well. Yeah, yeah, we've got a, um, a a genuine, superb level mindset. We've got a few, in fact, but uh, we've got, say, uh, Dr. Chris Walton's coming along uh, and he teaches mindset and things. He's got he's, he's got a lot of stuff out there. He works with Olympians and world champions and stuff. I mean, really high class athletes. So he's mm -hmm. going to come along and, and, and tell us about what he does and help us with that. We've got a thing called the Power Cube coming along. Adam's bringing that. I don't know whether you've heard of that. It's a fantastic piece of kit that measures your striking. Um, and so, again, what we're hoping is a lot of people are going to want to play with that just because, well, yeah. we're, all, we're all just big kids, really, aren't we? So we're going to want to play <laughs> yeah, of course. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but also, if we if we can get Chris involved with that, doing a little bit of mindset work, you know, we're, we're looking at, well, maybe we can, you know, do some measurements before, have and five after. minutes with Chris, and then, you know, do some more measurements after and actually get some That's actual great. genuine data and things. So there's that going on. We've got bushcraft. So we've got archery. We've got fire making. We've got shelter building and stuff. So, again, the kids can all get involved with that, you know. Great opportunity to put the phone down and live in the real world for a weekend. <laughs> Uh, that's that's quite that's quite really packed because you got you, you're not it's not just about martial arts you also mm -hmm. have fitness you've got mindfulness as well and in the martial arts you have quite a huge range of styles so from japanese yeah. to chinese mm -hmm. to um combatives mm -hmm. to european martial arts as well isn't it yeah yeah so there's there's a lot of eclectic stuff there so you've got um, you've you've got the sort of your karates and things like that, which are more standard. Although we've got lots of different styles of karate and stuff, and some really high level people is fantastic. But we've also got some things that are a little bit more unusual. So we've got fifty two blocks, the American prison system mm -hmm. coming along. Um, we've got the current world champion shin kicking. Um, yeah, the world champion shin kicker, which is uh, basically an old English system of martial arts. It's been around since like the 1600s. So that's they they have this um, this world championship every year, and he's just won that. So he's coming along, going to help us with that. Um, so we're looking to set up uh, a game of kabaddi. I don't know whether you've heard of kabaddi. It's an Indian game. It's slightly mad, but it's great fun. Um, so we're uh, we're lucky to have somebody who's very well versed in that who's going to come along and help us and we think we're going to get a couple of teams together for charity for a bit of fun uh, so there's that going on as well yeah so there's all kinds of of great activities to get involved with it is it is a jam-packed weekend yeah we've had to do that because number one um you know not everyone can, af can afford to take a week off work and all the rest of it and number <laughs> yeah, two so yes, many sir. people wanting to get involved and I didn't want to yeah. turn anyone away, you know, so it was, we had lots and lots of really great people that come forward and said, Hey, this is a fab idea. How do we get involved? And, uh, and, and, and yeah, I didn't want to say to people, I'm really sorry. We, you know, we can't fit you in. We can't get you involved because I, the more people, the, the better, you know, I mean, obviously yeah. we're, we're, we're kind of full now in that regard, but, um, but absolutely great. that so many people wanted to, wanted to be involved with it. 
and uh you've got also like people selling stuff right yeah so there's market stores as well so yeah we've got um we've got the wonderful art marshal coming along they do lots of fantastic t-shirts so there's um there's there's specific festival t-shirts like you would get at a, at a music festival and things there's uh, lots of their own range of stuff which is fantastic we've got other sporting people coming along as well we've got um as i said clinics and and workshops and uh, i'm trying to think what other market stalls we've got we've got some more coming as well so there's um i can't i can't remember everything off the top of my head it's that much going on uh, but we're also we're also just a few miles outside of Froome, which is a lovely market town in Somerset, and we're less than half away, half an hour away from Bath. So, you know, if um, if for example you want to come and your significant other is not into martial arts at all, but absolutely loves shopping, great, less than half an hour from Bath, fantastic historic oh, yeah, city, Bath you know, nice. yeah. beautiful place, yeah. Beautiful so place, there's yeah. lots of opportunities to to come and enjoy the day and get involved. Okay uh right dean franco is in the house hi everyone and also Hello. he said wow 52 blocks phil said you you have matt chat uh, chapman and harry flexman to fight that on your list of activities i hear that you have great activities for the children and some nights with armor will there be any jousting on horses too okay <laughs> <laughs> um so yes we've got matt chapman coming along uh, and he's he's great he's gonna do a talk so he's going to you know, sort of help people to understand how to really make the most from online course creation and things like that. He's, you know, he is the goat at that. Yeah. Um, and then he's also going to do a Mitmaster session, which, again, is fantastic. Really knowledgeable guy. So he's going to do a physical session on that as well. Uh, obviously, Fight Dad's coming along. Good old Harry. Uh, he's, you know, he's a he's a he's great fun to train with and a great, great guy to be around. So really pleased to have him on board um, with regards to the Knights there. They are what they call um, historic medieval battle (HMB). So they're not reenactment. So they don't. Okay. They're not. They, they don't just come and pretend. These guys knock the snot out of each other with actual oh. weapons. I, I did it myself for a while, and they're bonkers. It's absolutely crazy. Um, so they wear proper full armor, and they, they their weapons are blunted. But other than that, they're real. And they, you know, they they spend half an hour whacking each other with these weapons, and then the rest of the day trying to knock the dents out the armor. Um, <laughs> and that's genuine. They really are like that. So they're going to come along and they're going to do some demos for us, where they're going to get fully kitted up and have a go. They're also going to run some training sessions in soft kit, so people can get an idea of how it works. Yeah, um, because nice. they 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 do a thing called bow hurt, and they that you can have five five against five, you can have twenty one against twenty one, you can have singles as well. But when they do the teams like the five against five especially when you're in full armor you're wearing what is essentially a really heavy post box so you've got like you've got this as your vision and and people are coming from all angles um and and so you've got to figure out the strategies the tactics you've got to work together as a yeah, team yeah otherwise you're going to start yeah. hitting each it's going to start hitting your teammate yeah 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 but <laughs> without it's, realizing it it's great fun i mean it's really cathartic you know to to to, to be able to just swing for the fences with these weapons it's just amazing i absolutely love my time doing that and wish i was young enough to, to continue but uh, um so yeah for those that want to get involved they'll be doing soft kit training and i'm sure there's going to be an opportunity to try some of the armor on and maybe even have a go are the are the headgears or the helmets really heavy yes oh <laughs> yeah, it's all really heavy. Yeah. So 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 if you um if you look at the the kit that people use for the reenactments, that's essentially mm. fake armor because it doesn't have to take a knock, it doesn't have yeah. to be resist yeah, weapons, yeah. right? But these guys, because they've got real weapons and they really hit one another, mm. their armor has to be effective and yeah, work. Very effective, yeah. Um, and it also has to be of the period and made of the right materials. So you can't have like this super duper titanium outfit kind of thing that's super light. <laughs> not allowed. Um and so or yeah the helmets <laughs> yeah, the helmets themselves are really heavy and all the kit is really heavy. And um I mean I I I talk about this when I'm chatting about this. When I the very first time I tried armor on properly I had to borrow somebody else's because I didn't have my own. And, and it's articulated at the joints, but because it wasn't yeah. made for me, it didn't quite fit. And I couldn't touch my own nose, right? I could barely see out of it. And and all down the one side was completely open because they they they, they worked with the opposite hand to me. Um, and so I clattered off in this completely ill-fitting suit of armor and got clanked around the head several <laughs> times. Um, it's, it's, you know, when you sort of submerge your head under the water in the bath? Yeah. 
it, it kind of that's the kind of noise you get in your head you know that kind <laughs> yeah. of being, yeah so but i recommend anyone having a go it's super fun <laughs> no i've only worn like uh japanese armor when when i was uh when i did the ancient assassins with history channel okay and yeah when i did that uh short move uh short movie with the with some of the students from uh london film academy okay so i was wearing like a a a, a real uh summer uh samurai headgear so in one scene i have to like fall down i can't i can't get up without somebody like <laughs> helping me so like the elephant man with a giant the, hel head. The, hel the helmet alone is so it's so heavy so yeah that yeah, it makes you wonder doesn't it it makes you wonder and, and really respect people yeah. from those time periods because mm. not only did they have to fight in that gear so it's not yeah. like they just mm. they just suddenly magically appeared and fought in that gear they trekked for miles and miles sometimes yeah. weeks wearing that all of the time yeah. they you know and and you think crikey it was so tiring just wearing it for 20 minutes never yeah. mind day after day and getting strapped yeah, exactly. into that you know exactly so, and you know and you know why sometimes when when we see them like uh in full gear they they run sideways right. i never un they ne i never understood that until basically i wore the armor yeah yeah so yeah the plates yeah. basically goes in between your legs so if you try to run straight the, the plates are basically will will basically dig into your legs mm. so you have to like go sideways at one point yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, black and blue. <laughs> but that that's but that see that gives you a, a a really interesting take on things going back quickly to what what you're saying about the hema and the books and things because yeah. because you can look at it from the frame of reference of today you and i now wearing yeah. these kind of clothing you know, but actually your movement is determined by the outfit that you're wearing and if you're wearing mm. any kind of armor or protection it mm. changes how you move and how you do things it also changes the sort of target areas that you're aiming at yeah um so if you look at the traditional jujitsu it was aimed for the articulated parts of the armor so up under the armpit and things like that um, that's true that's very so, true. Yeah, so again it's, it's it's all really fascinating and there's no you know there's no actual end to it like, that's the beauty of martial arts overall isn't it you know every every answer just creates more questions yeah true and even like the way you swing your sword mm. you, you swing it differently when you're not wearing an armor and you swing it differently when you're wearing one because you can't go like this if you're wearing a headgear no, <laughs> no that's true yeah <laughs> yeah only up to here so yes. you can't <laughs> yes. so i think what we can establish is aikido people never wear headgear yeah, I mean, <laughs> Aikido, Aikido basically uh, came out during the 1940s. That was already post-war. Yes, so yes. Things have already changed. Yeah, no, so... absolutely. Yeah, I was, I was joking a little bit because they do. <laughs> I know, I know. Um, there's a lot of those. There's a lot of that. I know, there, but... I know. That's why, I, I, I because I practiced Aikido before, and mm. I, we've been doing quite a lot of like bulk and stuff and everything. So I'm used to like bringing like the sword over my head. Mm. So when we did that, when we wore that armor and we try to when we try to do our fight scene it's like there's no way you can bring the yeah, weapon yeah. above your head like this so you really have to like go in front mm. <laughs> and of course anybody was watching you will now criticize you why are you doing that it's that's not the correct way of swinging your sword but yeah wear this armor and yeah. see basically if you can swing it above your head <laughs> yeah yeah no, it's, it's all oh, fascinating, yeah. isn't it? Just having a go. But that's one of the great things about the uh, the festival. And it's something that I really wanted was mm. I wanted to get all kinds of different people involved. And I wanted all of those different people to get involved with each other. So yeah. um, I didn't want people to just sort of come teach their section and then wander off and not involve themselves yeah, with yeah. anything else. You know, I want people involved and, and, and getting getting involved with each other. And so, you know, that whole, I don't want to do that because I'll feel foolish or I'll look silly, you know, mm. um, I, I, it's like good. You know, that means you're learning something new. I mean, exactly. fundamentally, you know, all instructors started as students and we all started yeah, because exactly. we wanted to we learn martial arts. We are still our students. Yeah. yeah, that's right. Exactly that. That's my point. So, you know, as, as people that want to learn, it's a, great opportunity to get involved with things you wouldn't normally necessarily get yeah. involved with and, sure. and and have a go you know yeah actually i would i would uh recommend for everybody to have a go at that wearing the full armor mm. it will give you a different perspective of fighting <laughs> yeah i agree i agree fully yes <laughs> okay so okay brett said here 
you just gave me an idea thinking of the opposite as seminar and anyone can run with this if they wish two days on the job alone or footwork alone or chi sao or hubut alone or jujitsu guard alone uh what or what have you it's just two of constant repetition around others around of others desire uh that's from brett uh robert small said what renaissance festival used to be uh sorry i'm just trying to i've just i've just seen the all the things on the side there so um so, okay yeah um yeah so uh, the the thing there with that brett is that um from if i can if I understand that correctly, um, is you can take any pr principle, basic principle, and all the different styles will have a version of, and it's great to mix and match those and play with those because if if nothing else, uh, this and I'm only speaking from personal experience because I can that's all I can speak for. But if nothing else, when I do things like that, it's great because it shows me, it reminds me how little I actually do know. You know, I'm great in my space, you know, and I know my thing and I'm, you know, I've been doing that a long time, but that's only a very tiny percentage of the whole. And so that two or three percent, I understand. So I can do it in my way. But every other way, it's alien to me mm. and I've got to relearn it. And so so it's a re it's a really good way, I think, of keeping people's egos in check is things like that. You that's know, true. Just, that's mm. true. That's true. OK, I feel is asking, how long did it take you to plan? on getting your martial arts events together as the two events back to back is is good thing is good going i really take my hats off to you and applaud yours and luchi's effort efforts as these are massive events and a lot of organizing behind the scenes um yes thank you phil yes um yeah we unfortunately well not unfortunately but we basically ended up with the dates that we did because kaizen was already fixed Mm. We um, the festival that was the dates that that, that I could get, and, and and we know they're very close together, and we know that um, it, there was a lot of work and a lot of overlap in the planning and things, and so we knew we was going to be up against it. However, um, we wanted to get the first one under the belt. So next year, we've got some announcements to make. Once we get the festival done, we're going to make some announcements with regards to the timing of next year's events and things, and they'll be staggered. There'll be a better distance between them. But yes, it has been incredibly hard work to get them both going. Uh, Lucci did an amazing job with Kaizen. Uh, it was a really, really good day. And we've already said that next year we're going to extend that out to two days. So it's going to be a full two day event. Um, so there's there's lots of great things going forward. Um, uh, but yeah, this 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 has been a bit tight and a bit challenging. Yeah, it will be great if you basically extend it to two days. I think uh, a lot of people enjoyed uh, and they feel that um, one day is uh, too short. <laughs> for yeah, well, again, it's expanded out, isn't it? It's grown year on year and every mm. year it gets a little bit bigger and there's a lot more going on. And yeah, um, and, and, and it's it's natural. It's that sort of natural progression. So it's sort yeah. of gone as far as it can go now as a single day yeah. event so it makes sense to expand that out and of yeah. course the festival this is this is the first one and it's you know it's a big endeavor um and we want it to be a an event we want it to be a wow we want people to go there and think that was amazing but we also want all the people that were watching and didn't want to quite commit because it's a first time thing but so mm. we want all those people that were like we're just gonna have a look see how it goes we want all those people <laughs> to think bugger we really missed out we should have been there, you know we should have, um, yeah. and and that's exactly how it looks like it's going to be to be honest so for all those people that ah. uh, that are thinking about coming along and haven't quite decided you you probably should because uh two weeks from now there's going to be a lot of people thinking oh i wish i'd have gone it looked amazing <laughs> so yeah. so yeah and plus you've got like the 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 atmosphere you've got glamping Mm. you've got like people with caravans coming there you've got people uh, uh pitching tent as well yeah 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the that again, the glamping pods there are amazing. I, they look like proper hotel rooms with yeah, um, yeah, you know the bed, they've got orthopedic mattresses on them, and um, <laughs> they're they're beautiful. I don't know whether everyone's seen the pictures. If you haven't, have a look. They really I've are. Seen, I've seen, I've seen, yeah, yeah. 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 And we've seen it. Yeah, you know, and, and we've we've really worked hard to keep the cost down for everyone as well. So as an example, the the glamping pods they're all sold out now. So, but they they go on the site themselves. So when people hire them for camping and stuff, they go around 160 pounds a night. And we're mm. doing a hundred pounds for mm. the entire weekend for one, so we wow. really tried really hard to keep the prices down for everyone, um, because you know we want we want it accessible for people. We want it to yeah. for people to make it work for them. So yeah. um, you know there isn't like an excess charge for training. Um, so you know you you pay your entrance fee, which is uh, forty pounds for the day for an adult, twenty for a child. Mm. You pay your entrance fee, and that gets you on all the mats that you want to go on. If you want to train at every single session crack on there's no extra fee for that you know so uh, we, we've tried to make it as absolutely you know affordable as we can um and we want people to, to you know to come as a family and, and really make the most of the weekend so yeah. um so yeah it's affordable it's really really enjoyable and everything about it is just is is something that i hope is is going to be a real big success year on year and just continue to grow mm. yeah i bet it will be I bet it will be. You, you and Luchi really seems to be like a good team. Yeah, yeah, I think I think so. Yeah, he's he's uh, he's a bit deceptive, is Luchi? Is Luchi? He's um, <laughs> um, he sort of wanders around and he's quite sort of happy and cheerful and um and it, and it doesn't look like he's sort of doing much. But if you watched him at Kaizen, uh, he he was firefighting all day long. He was running around solving problems. He didn't get flustered. He didn't, you know, he didn't lose his rag at anything mm -hmm. all the problems that came up he just dealt with them and got on with it um and and you know it, it's it, that's a skill that's a, that, yeah. that genuinely is a skill sure. and that's really where he's really really strong you know so sure. um yeah so he's I, I think he's a good match and i think it works well and and i'm saying all of this because at the festival i intend for him to do all the work which is why i'm buttering <laughs> him up now <laughs> so Lucci, i hope you're listening to this yeah <laughs> <laughs> okay so uh, Brett said, so in Armour, they are they were masters of center line, but could not truly apply fencing. I'm not sure. Okay. I'm not sure whether that means the, the fencing as you see with the foils and the, the, the sort mm. of that lunging kind of stuff. Um yeah, it's a completely different way of fighting in armor and it, and it's it's set differently. So um, in the same way that when you change the rules of, 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 of a, an arm system, so Thai boxing is different to boxing is different to karate is different to yeah. Taekwondo. Um, you know, you change, you change the rule set and then the platform has to be different to accommodate that. So it's kind of the mm -hmm. same, put armor on somebody. It's really hard to do a full lunge. Yeah. Um, I think, you know, I think when, 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 when like even the Knights, then when they wear armors, they use a different type of weapon yes. to when they are not. So, yeah yeah okay and kurt when i was teaching macp and krav in the army i always loved the days when we were in full kit and attempted to make things work and discovered how much modification had to be made when wearing a plate carrier rifle kevlar and full magazines mm. clothing type matters 100 percent agree mm. <laughs> that's true actually mm. Yeah, yeah. Again, again, that's a, is exactly right. It's one of those where, um, what's interesting, if you look at the early days of Crav, um, I, I always say that Crav is more an attitude than a system. Mm. Um, uh, again, people may 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 find that differently, but I, uh, it was essentially a very a very small system originally that was designed for fit, healthy young men to murder each other. OK, mm. so, you know, it, it had that military bent on it and, and that was it. That was all it was designed for. And of course, it had to be fitted in amongst all the other training that people would get. So while learning the hand to hand portion of what they do, they also have to learn everything else within yeah. what, what it meant to be a soldier. Right. So it had to be con, con, you know, small and concise. Right. Um, but that's obviously expanded out over the years. So just like the waistline of, of, of us older martial artists, the, 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 the um, art itself, um, Krav Maga as a system, has expanded out. And now we've got, you know, there's belts, there's ground, there's grappling, there's this, that, the other. And I'm not dismissing any of it because um, everything evolves. That's life. Yeah. 
but when you look at it from its from the way that it um from from the way that it began and you think if somebody's in full kit if they got all the full kevlar on if they've got you know if they've got weaponry with them if they if they've if, if they've got everything that they need to do their job right they're not going to be performing bjj in the sport way of doing things mm. right so yeah. you can't necessarily embed that into it you've got to you've got to adjust it right so it's not to say mm. you can't do it but you've got to make it work under those circumstances right so um you know at the basic level I always say to people, whatever it is you do, whatever system, right, get some work wear on, you know, start, have a go at it in the things that you would normally wear, right? We don't tend to walk around in our gi or our outfit or whatever it is, our training gear and bare mm. feet after being stretched for 10 minutes, you know, we don't tend to walk around like that all of the time. So try it in your work boots, try it in your jeans, you know, try it in your going out dress, try it after two or three glasses of wine, you know, um, try all these different versions of what you do and see how that works for you. So I'm a big advocate of that. And I, and I think that's a really valuable thing for people to do because it, it mean it means people can modify it so that it can work when they need it. And I think that's yeah. sort of important, you know? Yeah, that's true. Mm. That's true. <clears throat> that's why uh, you have to be able to like find ways to, uh, to adapt whatever you're practicing to mm. uh, what you need it for. Mm, like yeah. job and everything so yeah okay um wayne hunt sent i'm working unfortunately but next year we'll be there okay yeah well hopefully we'll see you next year my friend okay and brett reese the more i think about that armor thing the more i think <clears throat> each set must have been made for one individual mm. and uh, that did not incur uh, what another uh, an not another wearing it would or they would uh, have just removed what hindered you yeah so it was made individually and again there's the um there's the rub with that because it was really only the the lords and the people with money that could actually afford armor in the first place so uh the lower down the the social economic status you were the less chance you had for any real armor mm -hmm. so you know so the 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 very rich people they got specially made armor that was made for them and their shape and their size and everything else and then as you went down the people got second hand armor or they mm -hmm. got bits of armor that they managed yeah. to scavenge or steal yeah. and then you had homemade armor and then none at all so uh and, and again that's that's the sort of the way that it always kind of was so it was only really the 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 elite the top people that had full armor because they, they were the only ones that could afford it yeah that's yeah that's true that's true okay um right so have you guys any, got any more questions for matt here i'm thinking about <laughs> 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 Oh, good luck, Brett. <laughs> Make <Yeah>. sure. <laughs> Not entirely sure he'd be able to stand up in it, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just remembered basically about when, when I went down on that arm where it was like, okay, it went, the, the director said, cut, everybody reset. I was like, help? <laughs> <laughs> I, can't, I can't move. I can just move. So yeah okay so right uh matt if anybody would like to learn under you so let's um whether it is combatives if it is craft or um about social media how can they get in contact with you yeah the easiest way is just to um put my name matt state into google or facebook or any of that uh s-t-a-i-t state that's that's the easiest way to go about it failing that if you want to find my um online stuff there's modern samurai dot online and that'll give you the courses and all that kind of thing and then it's uh, differentthink.co.uk and that will take you to the social media stuff that i do yeah yep and don't forget to check matt's uh instagram <laughs> um yeah it's more facebook and tiktok that i use it, it oh, over facebook, really? facebook overlaps with instagram these days so it gets shared yeah, on there as well true. to a degree that's but, true, that's true. um predominantly facebook yeah uh, okay uh catherine said yes hema gear is custom and can be very pricey mm. but so worth trying yes 
Yes, agreed. It's one of those. If you can, um, yeah, if you can, it's always worth borrowing somebody else's to try it first. Make sure you like it before you, uh, before you, you invest. invest on it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, actually, I just bought the uh, Hema gloves and the fencing mask. Okay, yeah, yeah. that that is already quite expensive. So, mm, yes. <laughs> so yeah, and yeah, and basically we use it now for like for sparring in in Cali. Mm. In, in in Filipino martial arts, it's actually much better than the hockey stick gloves. Yeah, uh, we okay. we used to we used to use hockey stick or lacrosse, so the hema is much better, and yeah. it's uh, you have, you got better protection, especially on the side as well of the fingers, mm. which you don't have in uh, lacrosse. Yeah, yeah, that no, makes sense. Okay, uh, Catherine said, "I'm a seamstress, so I'm in the armory. <laughs> I'm the armory." <laughs> oh yes yes must, yeah well that's that must yeah. be must be a long you have to spend quite a long time basically constructing one don't you yeah as i said earlier the groups um the, the group spend half an hour sort of bashing each other uh during the uh, event itself and then the rest of the evening fixing the armor <laughs> knocking out the dents and stuff like that so it's a constant uh, it, it's a constant thing of, of of fixing things and repairing things because they go through the walls. I mean, they really do yeah. put put them through it. So the the HMB guys and um, and there's a it, it, there's a team of people. Again, it's one of those where even putting on the suit of armor is nigh on impossible by yourself. You need help to do so. You need yeah. That's and true. so even at that level, it's more than one person involved. And when you're talking about um, these kind of things like that, there's normally a group of people. Not everyone's fighting. Some mm. people are there, as I say, to, to, to deal with the weapons and the armor yeah. and stuff. So deal with the maintenance. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And some people just like being part of living history. Some people just mm. like being in and around that environment because they do, uh, especially at their own events, when they, when they do a lot of their, their big things, they yeah. um, it's all period. So everything has to be period. Everybody dresses period. They eat period. They they live period. You know, um, no mobile phones, no uh, no modern technology. That's that's not allowed at all within the sites. Oh wow! Okay, that's that's quite interesting actually to to know. Um, yeah, Catherine said, yeah, kind of like a pit crew. <laughs> yeah. Yes, yeah, exactly that, exactly that. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Uh, Brett said, but you still get a little rock. Yeah, yeah, especially when you get hit, you get hit in the head. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, you. you <laughs> uh, it's it's one of those. You may not get the the sort of cutting effect of the blade, as yeah. in it doesn't cut through, but you certainly get the impact and the vibration. Mm. And uh, yeah, it'll 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 ring your bell. That's for sure. Yeah, definitely, definitely. <laughs> okay, so guys, have you got any more questions or uh, uh, anything you want uh, Matt to address? <laughs> bell ring. <laughs> said Catherine. Okay. Uh, Darth here. So if not, I mean, um, in 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 the sense of like being a martial artist that has a strong social media presence, what advice can you give to the community? Um. Uh, well, probably the easiest thing is just to uh, just to have a go. Just do it. Um, don't ignore the trolls, ignore the haters, ignore the stupid nonsense that invariably comes with social media. Uh, it's very easy to be big and brave behind the screen. And, and that's just an unfortunate fact of life. You know, um, I was told something quite a long time ago and it's always stuck in my head. And that is work to the rule of thirds. Right. And that applies to everything. So basically a third of people are going to actively dislike what you do a third of people mm -hmm. aren't going to care less and a mm -hmm. third of people are going to like what you do and so it's though it's that third that you want to be aiming at the other two thirds nobody cares yeah. right so aim for the third that like what you do and more importantly if you think about one of the reasons why you started being an instructor why you started getting involved in martial arts you know most people would say they want to help other people they want to help build confidence and a braver life and you know for people to reach their full potential all that sort of thing right and so if that's your goal surely you want to use the tools that are available to be able to reach as many people as you can with that and mm -hmm. so one of the things with me is, as it's like some of my videos are in the multiple millions. I've got lots and lots of videos that have been seen all around the world, and 
the impact of that is amazing. I get people from all over the world, people I've never met messaging me going, you know, thank you for that. I've really helped. This has happened. That's happened. I've done that. Mm. And it's, it's such an amazing feeling. And so, yeah, I recommend to anyone just basically just, just get out there and do it. <laughs> all right. Great advice, actually. Um, Kurt said, what makes you happiest about the state of martial arts? I would say at the moment, the fact, as I mentioned earlier, the fact that we seem to have this uh, renaissance of excitement about getting together and there's a lot of multidiscipline stuff going on. We're sharing more information. There's a lot more reaching out, you know. So, you know, me as a, um, as a for, from a Japanese background that's then gone into combatives and stuff, I can sit here and have a fantastic conversation with you guys. You know, you've had other guests that have, have been from other systems and things, the, the festival itself all coming together. And the fact that we can do that without having that you know my stuff is better than your stuff kind of nonsense you know uh, <laughs> and we and we can just enjoy each other's company and celebrate the the things that we share and love together i think that's 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 what i love about the martial arts right now is that that's possible very positive thank you very much for that answer uh so i think um okay brett said i'm a fan and it's an honor sir uh well, thank you Bench folk, Matt, you owe me a cola. <laughs> Ooh, me a cola. Oh, owe me a cola. <laughs> okay, I'm not entirely sure what that means. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, okay. So, I mean, guys, if you don't have any question for Matt, uh, I would like to say now that uh, when they attempt to keep us apart, we simply find a way to not let that happen. That's a nice thought from Brad. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So, that, again, that's, yeah, that's the, um, obviously with the few years that have gone by and um, the, the world having to deal with the problems that it has. Yeah. It's great that we can, you know, now, as you say, as you say, you know, get back and share. Hmm. Oh, that was for the bell ring. We said at the same time. <laughs> I <see>. Ah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, I mean, in behalf of uh, the moderators of FMA discussion, the FMA community, thank you very much for coming as our guest, Matt. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, thank you for sharing with us your journey, uh, how you get uh, how you get about organizing the what will be the epic martial arts event of the year in in the UK. So. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you very much for having me on, and I've really enjoyed having the conversation. And thank you to everyone listening and the and the guys in the background there making this uh, go so smoothly. So thank you very much. Thank you, thank you. and see you in two weeks. Ah, uh, see you next weekend. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'll see soon. you in Somerset then. Okay. Right. Enjoy the rest of your evening. Have a nice rest. Oh, and you. Thank you. Bye bye. Okay. Thank you. Right. Thank you very much, guys, for uh, staying on and watching uh, episode 420 with Matt State. Um, okay. Uh, tomorrow, Dean will have an, an interview. So stay tuned for that one. I can't remember what it is. Sorry for that. But yeah, Dean will have an interview tomorrow uh, for episode 421. Okay. Enjoy the rest of your week, guys, and we'll see if we can do some uh, live uh, video from the Martial Arts Festival. And also this weekend, I'll be in Hastings teaching as well. Okay? Uh, see you soon, Phil. Uh,